Had a background briefing from an administration official the other day. Can't tell you whom. That would be wrong. But this Obama guy made it a note of a compelling conundrum. We are at risk of not taking on enough new risk. Our investors, from big banks and hedge funds to pension funds and regular investors, so burned from the financial fire of the past year that they won't come back into the markets. Our economy can't grow without it. Let's talk about it with three hot shots tonight. Diane Garnick, investment strategist at Invesco, Art Hogan, managing director at Jeffries, and Doug Hirshhorn, trading coach and kind of a shrinky guy when it comes to the markets. Art, let's start with you. Economy's healing, real threat of worldwide catastrophic failure off the table. Housing starts jumped 17 percent last night. American Bankers Association says the recession ends next quarter, but are investors feeling risky and frisky enough? Well, to the extent that we've got a certain amount of the, the paradox of thrift going on, and obviously, um, as you look at the uh, demographic of the U.S. And, uh, uh, investor taking on less debt and bringing up more savings rates, obviously that's, that, that, that's one dynamic that's playing against risk-taking. But I think the, the flip side of that is if you look at the yield on the 10-year going from 2% to 4% in a short period of time, obviously more risk is being taken in the marketplace, and I think that will continue. Yeah. I think we're at the early stages of recovery here, okay. and I certainly think you know, that... Uh, Diane, that old cliche that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, I mean, there's an awful lot of money on the sidelines here. I think like $9 trillion are in checking accounts, money market funds. It's just sitting there, waiting and waiting. And you're right, the appetite for risk is certainly a lot lower. But one of the big problems we have is that people constantly think about their portfolios in dollar terms. And they say, oh, I want to put 50% of my dollars towards equity and you know, 50% towards bonds. And they make these little allocations. I think the way that we're going to see the future is that rather than allocate their dollars, they're going to allocate their risk. They're going to think to themselves, well, I want to have a 10% realized volatility level or risk level and then budget that risk more accordingly, right? So they're going to say, oh, I want 50% of my risk to come from equities right. and 50% of my bonds. That's going to make a big difference. I think that's what's going to really help investors yep. get through that hurdle and but invest. But sometimes you just have to let go and jump out of the plane and pull the cord on the parachute. Doug Hirshhorn, uh, are we getting in the way of, our, are we getting our own way here in terms of risk? And, yeah, we are. It's a, it's a large psychological issue. It's called fear of re-injury. It's very classic in sports. Athletes hurt themselves and then even though they're physically Physically here, they're mentally not at the place they need to be, and as, as a result, they won't engage. Psychologically, consumers are at that place. They've been hurt real bad. It's real fresh in their mind. They need to get back in the game, but it's got to be on their terms, very small, slow, and gradual. So, Art, they're just a bunch of wusses who really ought to, like, wake up and get back in these markets. Well, Dennis, I will tell you this. If you look at the AMG data and you look at the fund flows that have happened on a real-time basis over the last three months, you're seeing increasing money coming in off the sidelines, coming out of money market funds, and coming into equity and mutual funds. That is showing you that as much as we, you know, we, we talk about people not taking a risk, we've seen it. In the last three months, the moving average of, of money coming into equity mutual funds, including ETFs, right. has gone from something less than a billion dollars to $2.3 billion. And then that's on a weekly basis. But we're seeing money uh, on coming a weekly back basis. Okay, But Diane, we're not just talking individual mom and pop investors. We're also talking banks. They get an influx of cash and they hold on to it rather than ship it out the door to other businesses because they're afraid they're going to need the capital. It's so true. We still see a lot of this cash hoarding. And remember, the worse the recession is, the bigger the change in mindset. So a great example, you know, if I happen to be a lady who grew up, I don't know, during the Great Depression, you could, coming out of the Great Depression, my entire attitude towards risk would have changed, right? I mean, this t-shirt would have been from 1920. I would have said, oh, it's still good, right? Yes. So and we know that people are going to change and be more, you know, hesitant before they step in and right. really buy. Doug, what, what are the fixes here? What can, can government do anything about it? What can we do inside our own heads to start to embracing risk? more and get back out there. I don't think it's as simple as snapping our fingers and say people wake up. I tell you again, I think it's about gradual desensitization, people going in small, testing the markets, stop looking for that perfect entry point that a lot of people say, you know what, I got hurt so bad that to make it back full boat, I got to find that perfect place. There is no perfect time. It's always a good time to get in, have that mentality going forward, and then really keep things in perspective. We're talking about the markets and money. It's not life. It's not health. And people right. are putting too much value on this concept. Right. It's only money. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Dennis.